here we go, everybody. The two tens, number one. Now, I was saving this a little bit, um, but we're, when we're talking about solo passion projects, I feel like we're all dancing around the fact that a near, near solo passion project is currently sitting at number one on this list with Hitman Freelancer. <laughs> Uh oh! I know. Huh. I know. I'm devaluing Haley's experience. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Haley. You you are a fan, as far as I understand it, of Hitman Freelancer, and it's one of those games that you want to spend more time with and want to love more. But everything you have played, you loved. Is that the fair read here, ma'am? Hitman Freelancer is the best rogue like me ever made. Ever made? Yes. Leo, how much hyperbole can you lob at this experience? Is is what I'm asking. Uh, no hyperbole, unfortunately. It'll just be a straight oh. uh, reading of my emotions on it. Smart right. answer. That <laughs> I was a total gotcha question. Dodged a bullet there. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Yep. He's already won. <laughs> Stop the count. I've never fought for a Leo pick to be number one ever. And I never will again. But I will be <laughs> so surprised <laughs> if I ever enjoy a game again as much as I enjoy Hitman Freelancer. Again on planet Earth. Again on planet Earth. Whoa. If I can take you all for a little journey, it might not all sound relevant, but I just ask that you close your eyes and come with me for a moment. Okay, I'm ready. It's 2016. Oh, that's not this year. Kyle's eyes are open, Leo. <laughs> Kyle, yeah, you left the journey. Eyes, gonna, if I close my eyes, I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> Join us for the journey, Kyle. It's 2016. A new game comes out that's not necessarily your thing, but it looks neat, and so you check it out. And guess what? It's your favorite game ever. It becomes the bar by which you judge all other games. You wonder why other games don't do the things it's doing, or more specifically, why other games don't try to make you feel the way this game makes you feel. It's 2018. The sequel comes out. The whole first one's in it, plus new stuff, plus it's better. You put in almost as many hours into it, but you're dwindling a little bit. It's 2021. The third game comes out. You like it, you know it's good, you admire it, but your heart just isn't singing for it the way it used to. Hansen asks you in the Game of the Year discussion to list the new features. You can't even think of any. <laughs> <laughs> That's humiliating. <laughs> Then to the start of 2022, January, they announce a roguelike mode, which is up your alley in this in, in this imagined scenario. Make sure you really imagine you like it. <laughs> so you redownload the game to prepare, to practice, because it seems like it's going to be a higher stakes mode. And over the course of this full year of 2022, you play so much of this game, you fall deeper in love with it than you ever have. You feel ashamed that when the first one was your favorite game of all time, you still didn't like it enough. You still didn't really even get what was so great about it. And you're still starting to scratch the surface of what it's giving you. Then January 2023, this is a January game that I'm still playing every week. January 2023, the roguelike mode comes out and it is a hundred times better than the game has ever been. <laughs> That's how much I love this. <laughs> Whoa. Can we open our eyes? Do, do we get to open our eyes now? 100 times better. 100 what times better. better. I can't overstate. the best thing ever? The, I, I still go back to the regular content, the legacy content or whatever. I still enjoy it. I still enjoy what it gives me. But I start to see how limiting it was right versus the way this has every single one of the game's hundreds of items all have their distinct purpose and moments and anecdote generating ability that looking back at the previous most freeing creative sandbox in video games it now looks limiting compared to this are we talking about tears of the king we're talking about hitman still yeah <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> all right. hey, you know what i'm Leo sorry i'm sorry Leo, can can you just give a primer of what Hitman Freelancer is? Like, I understand it's a ro it's a rogue like mode of of like that trilogy. They took that trilogy and turned it into a rogue like mode. But is it is it like the same levels? Is it that you're going through? I I'm yeah. unaware of like kind of the core premise and and uh, what's new. It's it's all the same maps, 
the new map is the home base, the home you're working out of. A lot of the progression is just getting different cosmetics for your home, different furniture or like music. You walk up to the music player and change what genre of music is playing over your your PA system. But you uh, bounce between the game's missions in a way that is uh, continuously immersive. It's like it's one long flow. It's the same maps, but you're traveling through them and coming back from them in a way that is part of like one canon story. If you die, you'll get loading screens of 47 hiding from the police by the side of the road, and then you get back to your base and he's suturing himself up on the table. Or if you win a mission, he's just like happily chilling, playing chess with his computer on a victory. Or if you like escape a mission and don't kill the targets, but you don't die, there's unique stuff for that too. It doesn't just play a death one when you fail the mission. It's like a, him pensive in his apartment on a rainy night. It all it all flows together completely cohesively in a way that you'll do a mission on one map, get your ass kicked, and then three hours later go back to that map and have a big victory on it. And it's like one big arc and one big story that makes these things really satisfying because that's the big change is the stakes. You have things you are losing now. If you drop your gun and don't pick it up, it's there for good. And you spent money on it. If I, I'll talk more about the new stuff in it. Probably the biggest new thing is that there is an in-game economy now. You're earning currency in a bunch of different ways by doing objectives and by cracking open safes that are totally new and in a bunch of different places, a bunch of different ways to open them. There are new enemy types in the showdowns, assassins and lookouts that really change how you approach those missions. Those showdowns are like nothing that has ever been in the game before. You're but sweating it's... during those. You're like, everything matters because if you die, you're dead. Like I so cheeked the save functionality in the main game because you just like, oh, I freaked up. Back to the save. If you mess up on those missions, it's like it you are running for your life to avoid getting shot. It's like you actually care, which is like exactly what Leo's saying. It makes yes. it it makes it matter for the first time in that game's history. And he's like, and in the main game, you may as well try to f shoot your way out of everything or whatever. You may as well just brute force it. See when the last autosave was is probably five minutes ago at the latest. But now it's like, do I even try this thing because what's on my person and the stakes matter to me so much. And so everything is this calculated risk. And it's it's kind of the same systems. I mean, you know, similar systems, bunch of new systems. But given this new weight to every single decision you're making, that makes everything so uh, satisfying when you pull it off. And when you fail to pull something off, it's still a learning experience. I think people rob themselves of something in this mode when they Alt F4 and undo their their loss at the last second because it's really... Like I said, all part of one story, and that includes you learning from what you did wrong, learning about the area you were in and what you didn't expect. And your brain is constantly cycling with, yeah, what I could do differently next time. And you'll maybe get the chance. The other thing I want to say about this, of the next 300 things I want to say about this, yeah. is <laughs> I still get my ass kicked in it. I'm 200 hours in. I'm getting my ass kicked. I still get my ass kicked thousand in this game i, I saw that he's I the he hit man is that is that like max level here no, no. I think max like eight thousand i think and i got yeah at least 500 this year <laughs> but Jesus. i i it's not i don't lose because it's unfair i i lose because it's continuously generating scenarios for me that i haven't solved before there's no one size fits all solution the way there is in the main game you'll get really attached to your your favorite way of doing things, the most reliable way of doing things. And this one, you might not have a silenced pistol. You probably won't for the first few hours. And that's like number one hitman crutch is a silenced pistol. But you have to find out other ways to get through all these scenarios than the ones you're used to. It's constantly, I've waffled on whether people who are new to hitman should try freelancer because it is so hard. It's kind of like the end game content really yeah. for people who know the game really well. But I do think it teaches you the game way faster than anything else because it is constantly giving you new things to do, constantly pushing you into these arenas, both literally pushing you into parts of the map you haven't been before, but also to like ways of thinking about it you haven't had to conquer before. I love it. And so and so the, the targets are different every every time on every map. Yeah, and those are all new for Freelancer. I've gotten repeats a couple times in my many, many hours. Like for a fun example, like, yeah, the, the loads are all random. And there was one time I loaded into Paris and it was I didn't know who was going to be the person I needed to kill. And for some reason, um, the luck was they all loaded together in a clump. 
and I had a grenade. So I had a choice to make, and I had like six seconds to make it. Do I chuck the nade at the four of them, and the way to get out is behind me? I could pull this off and be done. Or do I calm down and go in? I chucked the nade, and I died, and I learned my lesson. And the next time I loaded in and I had a grenade, and I maybe a couple of them were clumped, I stopped and thought about it instead of just monkey brain chucking a grenade <laughs> into, a, into a live like show with hundreds of people around me. Your Not grenade killed three it. out of the four of them, and the fourth one was the one who was the suspect. The it's fourth one was around like a corner. Yeah. And, and in those moments, you're like, well, you know, I knew it was a risk, and here I am. I, I do have a I've been keeping anecdotes all year about the moments I've been getting into in this game. <laughs> yeah. And love it. Whatever what, you got, man. What are what are showdowns? Because those are like once that. every few missions, essentially, you have to uh, you have like four to eight potential targets and you have to look at them through the camera and see like, OK, I know the target's wearing a hat. I know they've got glasses. Do they or don't they have that? You mark them as not the suspect. I, they've got certain tells if they do anything besides those tells then they're not the right guy. They have a certain type of meeting. If they have a different type of meeting, you eliminate them. So it's, I wasn't sure how those would last playing the technical test, but I still really enjoy those and still have no problem being really patient, checking everybody off one by one. But I, I think really to talk, if I really, the most special thing is the way that the variety of objectives push you into these situations. And those are what I have anecdotes about. For instance, on Haven Island, I had to kill a guy with an unsilenced pistol, which, you know, even if you have an un a silenced pistol at that point, suddenly, how do I do it with an unsilenced pistol? This guy was on the back porch of this evil villain's mansion working the grill. And I said, I could kill him. That's certainly something I'm capable of here, but I'm surrounded by guards. But there is this speedboat exit that's locked. And so the mission then became, wait, is the speedboat key inside this mansion? And so I'm creeping around trying to find the key within this mansion, which is like a totally new objective on this tiny part of this huge map that I haven't had to do before. And then and then by the end, yeah, the unsigned pistol kill wasn't even the mission. I popped him and ran in the speedboat because the mission was getting the key and it was its own satisfying journey stealthing through that through that mansion. And I also I get this so in my head. I think I'm so smart. I think I'm master hitman. Right. And but people just have their own framework for thinking about this game and working through it in a way you can always learn from. I was watching Haley's stream and she had a target inside one of the houses on Whittleton Creek. And I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so she could hop the fence and go in the back window or else there's a gutter she can climb and sneak down. And she walks up and rings the doorbell and drops an <laughs> explosive on the ground and walks away. <laughs> she comes and answers the door and gets blown up. It's like I never would have thought to do that. That's so but that's good. just the, the, the density of stuff. You are always carving your own path through it. There's one Miami kill where it's on the podium. You can rig the fireworks to explode everybody on the podium. This one happened on a, on a stream of mine. And so I needed a collateral explosive kill for a specific challenge. And I said, well, that guy's on that podium. Can I rig this whole thing? To blow but wait it has to it only goes off when somebody wins the race so i have to wait till the race is over and wait for them to come up and then they come up and they're discovering the bodies and but the fireworks are still going to go off any second and i'm in the like booth where tech is working just watching this on tv there's like an in-game tv showing the podium for the podium ceremony watching the actual people walk around in <laughs> chaos and then suddenly getting all blown up <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all these situations that are technically in the main game, but you just don't get in that scenario the way you do here. It, right. it's, it opens it all up. The anecdotes here are reminding me of the way people talk about Baldur's Gate 3 and make me excited about it, but like haven't had those experiences yet. It's like the same kind of thing where I'm like, man, all of that sounds so fun. That sounds so awesome. Ha I don't have any of those. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I could say the same thing about Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, watching other people yeah. approach puzzles the way that I did and seeing them do it different ways just consistently blew my mind. And it's like all the I would I mean, we haven't sort of cemented this, but the top three games, you know, on our list are all games that excel at giving players agency to approach it in just ways that we just didn't really play games until this oh, year. Kyle, I don't know if you're, so, you're looking at the same top yeah. three. Yeah, Alan Wake 2? Well, so I agree like, that Zelda I, should be above Alan Wake 2. Zelda there, okay? and Hitman are what I'm talking about, yeah. The correct top three. Um, no, it is... I mean, um, excuse I, me, Ben? 
Mm-hmm. I, I said the correct top three. <laughs> but that was a positive thing for you, sir. Yeah, that was really in like, your favor. <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help you. I think the way it stands out for me is that it is every damn mission something cool or interesting happens or you yeah. learn something new. Tears of the Kingdom, I had a lot of time where I wasn't really enjoying it because I didn't really... I, you know, I could have put more into it, more creativity into the solutions I had and probably had a better time, but it just wasn't the the density of notable experiences that this game has. And I totally think it's fair to say that these are experiences I'm having because I'm this deep in the game and yeah. going for every objective, which you don't even have to do. I just think it's really fun because it keeps doing this stuff for me. But a lot of it is is luck-based, too. There was a time on Dubai where an interesting com- combination of three assault rifle kills, three shotgun kills, and don't take any damage. So doing this without getting into combat, and I had a silenced assault rifle, got that fine, and I only had a loud shotgun. So I'm near an exit thinking, how do I get these three kills? Here's two guards, they're looking away from me, I could pop, pop, take care of them pretty good, but then somebody's gonna come in here and I can't guarantee I won't get shot the second they come in the door, because I wanna get this take no damage one. And as I'm standing there looking at these two guards, evaluating my surroundings, the door opens and a random guard is dragging the body of a guard I killed with the assault rifle through the room, just like (laughs) through the hallway next to us. He's just walking by, focused on his own little task. Just pr- just bringing him, delivering himself to me because of the systems working as intended. And I just got all three of them right next to the exit before anybody came. And it was it was perfect. And there's a lot of like, yeah, l- luck is a big factor as well as preparedness. It's a combination. If you thought, hey, this video wasn't bad. Well, there's a whole lot more like it on MinMax's YouTube channel. Please help us out by subscribing to our channel and checking out the MinMax Show podcast, also available on your favorite podcast app, the best, most thorough discussion about games on the internet with the deepest dive, our monthly community trivia show with prizes called Trivia Tower, and a whole lot more. Thanks so much for your support, everybody. All you gotta do is click that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it.